Um, Peter, thank you for coming on with us. Thanks, Alex. Where do you want to start? I mean, there's just so much happening. Yeah, you know, all the things that I've been talking about, both on your program and, you know, my own uh, internet program, a Peter Schiff show, or whenever they will occasionally invite me on, uh, you know, conventional uh, television, you know, all this stuff is now starting to, to happen. It's starting to unfold. The mainstream still doesn't understand, right? They, they still think, oh, maybe the Fed made a mistake. Maybe they shouldn't have raised rates. That wasn't the mistake. The mistake was lowering them to zero in the first place. The minute they did that, they, they sealed our fate. It didn't matter when they raised rates. The minute they would do it, everything was going to fall apart. Because this was a phony recovery. It was a bubble. And the fact that they waited so long means that the bubble is that much bigger, which means it's that much more problematic when it pops. I think what we're staring at right now, unless the Fed quickly backtracks and cuts rates and does QE4, which I think they're going to do, they may even go negative, but I think we're going to have a worse financial crisis than the one we had in 2008. But if the Fed does what I think it's going to do to try to prevent that crisis, then they're actually going to usher in something much worse in the form of a dollar crisis, which is going to be much worse than just a general financial crisis. They could finally kill the dollar because the conventional wisdom is that we're the worst, we're the best house in a bad neighborhood. But at the same time, it's got to give someday and it just can't go on forever. And it appears that's beginning to crack with all the big banks and the Royal Bank of Scotland and Soros saying, panic, it's over, everything's going to collapse. It almost makes me then ask, what do they think they're doing? Well, they have no idea. But, you know, the only reason that the dollar has risen these past several years, although it's now falling so far in 2016, but the reason it rose is because everybody was convinced that what the Fed did actually worked that we had a real recovery and that the Fed was going to be able to raise rates. I knew all along that that wasn't true, and I actually thought the Federal Reserve was smart enough not to raise rates. But they proved me wrong on that because they were dumb enough to think that they can get away with a quarter-point hike. I knew that wouldn't be the case, and now they've pricked their own bubble and the air is coming out of it. And, you know, that's why you talk about gold. The only reason gold was falling was because people believed in this myth. Now that we're, you know, looking beneath behind the curtain, Gold is off to its best annual start in the history of gold, right? Gold is now at about $1,230 an ounce, a little bit more. It was at $1,050 the day after the Fed raised rates. And in fact, just yesterday, one of the biggest gold bears, this analyst over at ABN AMRO, uh, she had a price target for gold in 2016 of 900 She just changed it yesterday from 900 to 1300 Now, that's a pretty big about face for sure. a major bank. And the reason she said that she did this is her case for lower gold prices was based on the Fed raising rates. She now believes that the Fed's not going to raise rates at all in 2016. And so now she thinks gold's sure, going to 1300 Sure, What do you say to people like Dent, who's been you know really accurate on a lot of fronts, saying, look, it's going to end up going down because it's not even really a commodity. It's, it's basically worthless. I disagree with him <laughs> on, on some of those fronts, even though I know he's really smart, because it, it is a commodity. It is industrially used. It, it, it's seen culturally also as a hedge against inflation or emergency. Big governments, uh, large populations, China, India, Mexico are buying Gold it. Gold is anything, anything but worthless. But forgetting about its role as a commodity, and it has a unique role, and it's been valued for its properties for thousands of years. But think about the environment we're in. Not only do we have 0% interest rates, but we have negative interest rates. And we have governments threatening to outlaw cash. They want to do away with the hundred dollar bill or the five hundred. That's euro the next note place or... I was going. I mean, this will this will be all we have as a yeah. true barter currency. It'll force us back to a real currency. That was my next question. Right. I've never seen a push by the European Central Bank and by Larry Summers and by the big five banks to get rid of cash to make us go all digital. What is that really about, Mr. Schiff? Well, it's all about control. It's about a loss of financial privacy. It's about a loss of freedom. And it's about being able to debase the money. See, the problem with negative interest rates right now is, well, I'll just take my money out of the bank and put it in my mattress, and I avoid the negative rate. Well, if they make that impossible, if it's, hey, either you put it in the bank or you don't have it, then it's stuck there, and then you can lose money with negative rates. And, and it's course, also about them money. being able to do bail-ins or tax your money uh, or, 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 or basically nationalize it, which they've done in Europe over and over again. I mean, the big kahuna of tyranny we've always known is getting rid of cash, and right. boy, they're sure and pushing it. 
And what about the underground economy? The, the underground economy is not going to go away if they take away cash. They're just going to have to find an alternative to cash. And what's the oldest alternative available? Gold. That's gold and point. silver. I mean, what are people going to use? People are going to go back to real money, traditional money. This experiment in fiat money is blowing up all around us. And it's ironic that probably just before the greatest bull market in the history of gold, you had so much negativity. In fact, just about all the hedge funds at the end of last year were short gold. I mean, it was the it was the first time in history that hedge funds were net short gold. Look at what these geniuses did. They were all short gold at b below 1100, and look where it is now. I mean, everything they bought. So has how gone bad down, did that hurt them? And the one thing they shorted went up. Well, who knows? I mean, I mean, hedge funds are probably going to blow up. Look at the banks. They own these financials. The banks have been cut in half. A lot of these favorite high flying tech tech stocks have been demolished. Everything they were buying is plunging, and the one thing they were shorting is what's going up. Gold is the number wow, one Wow, I asset. didn't think of that because, as you know, you talked about this a decade ago. Ron Paul's talked about it. Uh, so many folks have talked about the manipulation of the gold and silver markets. It's now come out they've been doing that. And so— oh, yeah, and look— you look at Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs is desperately trying to encourage everybody to short gold. They've been coming out several times. Not only are they telling people to sell gold, they're telling them to short it. They're saying it's going to How long can it's they suppress it? How long can they suppress it? Well, look, obviously not long. This whole fantasy is evaporating. It's falling apart before their eyes. They're desperate to try to do something. They want to talk the price down. But, you know, the truth is out. Sure. They raised interest rates now by a tiny little bit. And what do we have? The worst start in, in history, history of the of stock the, market. Of the Dow. Right. So, well, let me just add this. I haven't sold one piece of gold or silver that I've bought in 25 years, and my gut tells me stuff I bought at 300, I kept it when it went to 2,000. It goes down to 1,000. I don't care. This whole paper fraud is garbage. The enemies of freedom lie about it constantly, and so I know it's there as an emergency backup, and it just comes to, and, and my gut tells me I did the right thing. But then I talk to yeah. people like, like, like Dent, to be fair, he didn't say it was worthless. He just he just said, you know, it's overvalued. He's right on so many things. Uh, He's then wrong I just on that, though. Well, <laughs> He's well, wrong on that because he somehow believes that it's all going to fall apart, the U.S. is going to collapse, and the dollar is somehow going to gain value in that environment. That makes no sense. That's like telling me that a corporation is about to go bankrupt but I should buy shares in the company because the stock price is going to go up. Well, he no, says so, it's 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 the best house in a bad neighborhood, and so far no, that's not. been happening. It's not the best house. It's actually the worst house. The only reason that people perceive it to be good is because it's been a self-fulfilling prophecy, and people have believed all Confidence the Confidence game. But we, but well, we you know the guy that brought the down illusion. Madoff. The guy that brought down Madoff says there's three bigger scams right now that he's yeah. investigating. Yeah, well, you know, but we pierced the illusion. We pretended that we can raise interest rates. I said many times on your show, the Fed needed to talk about raising interest rates to pretend that they could do it, but not actually do it and prove that they couldn't. Well, we just raised interest rates a quarter point, and all hell is breaking loose. If you look at the banking sector, it hasn't been this stressed since the before uh, the That's my next question. You're getting into all the technicals. You did call it just exactly the whole time with QE and what would happen. Tell us next... And I'm not disagreeing with you, but somebody like Dent says the U.S. is great, China is bad. China's going to hell in a handbasket. You a lot of times say China's better than the U.S. China's set to ban all foreign media from publishing online. That's the independent. Uh, China obviously has seen a third of its wealth go away. What do you see really going? Where are the best places to be? Where are the worst places? And what's the next shoe to drop? Yeah, look, well, what does China produce? They produce all sorts of products that everybody in the world wants to consume. We have a huge trade deficit with China. It's not the other way around. All we produce is treasury bonds. We go into debt. We borrow money to buy the things that the Chinese economy is productive enough to create. So we're the country that's in a lot more trouble, not China. They're the ones that have been loaning us money. They're the ones who have been, you know, allowing us to have all the stuff that they produce. So I, I think that people who are worried about China are missing the bigger picture. China has problems, but our problems are much larger. Sure, he comparison. thought China would be the detonator, but isn't the argument really the detonator? Uh, and I think he says this too, and you say this, is is the, the QE unlimited? Oh, yeah. And, you know, a lot of these hedge funds that were shorting gold or different hedge funds now are shorting the Chinese uh, currency, the, the, the yuan, because they think it's going to collapse. But it's actually the dollar that's going to collapse, not the yuan. Good God. Because as... 
It, it's been the idea that we can raise interest rates that has supported the dollar. Sure. This is the biggest bubble the Federal Reserve has ever inflated. The U.S. economy is in worse shape than it's ever been. We doubled the national debt uh, since the financial crisis. And you're not being negative. These are facts. So let me ask you this. Just, no. just as a father, you know, as a father talking to a father, okay, what do you really think is going to happen? I know you're not a prediction, but... Obviously, we have another Great Depression. It, 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 people are going to kill each other. I mean, we're not as moral as we were. People were hardworking. They knew how to plant a garden. They And still, 7 million people, major university studies show, died in association of malnutrition or from illnesses from malnutrition. Basically, 7 million people died in a famine in the U.S. over that 10 years. Uh, it was, it was you know, quietly dealt with. It was very, very sad. Europe, tens of millions. What is going to happen if we have a real, real depression here with this spoiled, rotten well, population? I mean, I am actually scared. Well, this could be a lot worse because during the Depression in America, we were still a relatively free, prosperous economy. We had lots of individual rights. Government was tiny. We had sound money. We were on the gold standard. Uh, and we had the benefit of falling prices. Everybody wants to talk about how bad.